How Television Transmission Works, Development of Black and White and Colour. First up, black and white television was the first one that was invented or developed. Black and white television, the signal was transmitted just as, I'll just work here, start a line, transmit a beam of electrons across the screen. So there was a start signal, there was the strength of the electron beam, then there was a stop signal. Happening at least 50 times a second. In Australia, we work at 25 frames a second. In America, they work at 30. Because Australian television is 50 hertz or Australian electricity is 50 hertz. In America, it's 60 hertz. The minimum times you need to see a moving picture in front of your eyes is 50 times a second for television. In Australia, we only transmit at 25 frames a second. So they had to find a way to make the picture flash 50. If you flash at 25 frames a second, your eye sees the picture and then it's your um, retina loses the image before the next flash comes. So let's see it. And then you've got to see another picture within 0 0.02 of a second to keep your retina showing an image. So what they did, they transmitted the first line of the television, the third line, the fifth line, the seventh. And then they came back and transmitted. Second, fourth, sixth, eighth, all the even numbered lines, all the way down. So you see one half of the picture, then the other half of the frame. So you're still only seeing 25 frames a second, but when they transmitted, they transmitted one half, one half, one frame. One half, one half, second. One half, one half, third frame. That was black and white television. Transmitted simply, luminance. How bright an image do you want on one frequency? This is a frequency band versus strength. Transmitted brightness or how many electron beams you wanted, then sound on a separate carrier. Along came colour television, and you needed to incorporate colour into it. So, they transmitted, once again, looking at the frequency beam, or the frequency band, they transmitted three separate sub-frequencies, showing the um, red, green, blue. Colour television, it added those to the luminance band, colour television decoded it and fired off three electron guns, one to fire off the strength of the red image, one to fire off the strength of the blue, one to fire off the strength of the green image. Transmitted through and three. How do they do it? This might be the electron gun. This is the screen with the phosphor. Obviously electrons are electrons are electrons. If you wanted something to shine red, you physically only needed to hit the red phosphor. Something that when the phosphor when the electron hits it, it glows red, blue, green. So the inside of a colour television screen was coated with millions of tiny dots of phosphorus, carefully placed. So the red electron beam went through a red mask and only hit the red dot. The green electron beam and they went through the same hole in the mask, only hit the green dot, or a line, like so. So red only hits red. This red electron beam here, only hits that red dot, and so on. That's how colour television worked. It was backwards compatible with black and white, because a lot of people had televisions that were black and white and didn't want to go out and buy a colour television. So. It had to be what they call backwards compatible. So you still transmitted luminance and sound, black and white televisions in the colour TV era still worked. It only picked up luminance and sound and all the colour additions just became noise on the picture signal that didn't matter. Colour televisions not only picked up brightness and sound but they also picked up the signal frequency for each of the three electron beams. That's how television worked. That's the development of cathode ray television.